Hi, this is Eric, and this is uh, episode 24 of Survival Medicine, and today I'm going to talk about clavicle fractures. Well, I guess this is kind of a stupid slide. What is the most commonly fractured bone? Well, you could probably guess from the title. It's the collarbone, or the clavicle. Uh, that's the bone that connects your sternum to the uh, chromion, which is part of your shoulder blade. So it's a little uh, hook of the bone that comes around from behind and uh, towards the front. Um, and that's your AC joint, where the clavicle meets the acromion. That's why it's the AC, acromioclavicular joint. Now, how do you break your clavicle? Typically, this is landing onto a shoulder. Uh, so some kind of fall that puts you... Uh, uh, put your shoulder in direct contact with the ground. It's very uh, uncommon uh, with a direct blow of the clavicle like a bat or something else. Most clavicle fractures are due to a fall landing onto a shoulder. So this past weekend I was playing in a soccer game and one of the guys on the imposing team uh, did exactly that. He was running alongside a guy. Uh, their feet kind of got tangled and he fell onto his left shoulder uh, leading to a clavicle fracture. Uh, if you happen to get an x-ray, this is typically what you'll see, a uh, break in the bone. And, but, uh, well, before we talk about surgery, how can you tell you have a clavicle fracture? Well, if you take your finger and you run from either the shoulder towards the sternum or from the sternum towards the shoulder, uh, you'll feel basically a disconnect on the bone. And it's usually good to start on the good side and run your finger along the clavicle on the good side first so you kind of know the contour of the clavicle for that particular person and what it feels like. And then go to the injured side, realizing if you press too hard, you're going to cause a lot of pain. So which ones of these fractures do we need to have surgery? Well, if the clavicle's just smashed into a bunch of tiny little pieces, uh, something that we call a comminuted fracture, uh, that uh, will sometimes require surgery. If, <coughs> excuse me, if the, the clavicle's broken and the bone pieces are overlapping so much that the distance between the sternum and the shoulder is significantly shortened on the injured side compared to the non-injured side, that may require surgery as well. If part of the bone is sticking through the skin or there's a laceration or cut, even if there's not a bone sticking through, but a cut right over the uh, where the fracture was, that definitely needs surgery. You need to go in there and wash that out very carefully to prevent uh, bone infection. If there's any numbness in the arm uh, that makes you concerned for uh, injury to one of the major uh, nerves, or if you have a pulse difference or a very pale arm, uh, you might be considered uh, or, or be considered of a vascular injury, an injury to one of the arteries or great vessels. Sometimes if there's a fracture way out distally, so distal means away from the center part of the body, so a f fracture way out on the edge close to the AC joint that interferes with the function of the AC joint may require surgery as well. And finally, if the bone um, is broken and doesn't heal within about three to six months, sometimes you'll have to go in and put a plate in to get that fixed. That's called a non-union. But most clavicle fractures do not meet any of these six uh, criteria, and they're just handled uh, by a sling. So what can you do? Well, you can, if you happen to have a triangular bandage in your first aid kit, which I recommend you have one, you can use a triangular bandage to make a quick sling. Uh, it, here's a picture that kind of shows you how you would wrap it around the arm, and then you can use the little um, back piece to safety pin to it, uh, the front uh, to close at the elbow and the strap around the body is uh, entirely optional. Um, but this will get you a quick and easy sling in the field. The other thing you can do is if you have safety pins is you can use the shirt uh, of the person uh, to safety pin it up to form a sling. Uh, this will buy you some time. But the thing that we mostly use out of the emergency room is a Velcro uh, splint. And no, I did not pick the picture because it's a female. This is about the only good picture I could get for this type of Velcro sling. Um, but it's got a Velcro one at the at the wrist, and then one at the uh, uh, right above the elbow, and that kind of helps immobilize the shoulder. That's what you want to do. You want to keep have, from having to move the shoulder around. So you want to keep the arm still and close to the body, and that's basically what you do to immobilize the uh, clavicles. And the older times, we would sometimes use what was called a figure of eight splint, and so you can imagine it's a uh, a thin splint that goes around both shoulders and kind of keeps you keeps pulling your shoulders back. Um, but basically the body can fatigue and the, the shoulders can slump forward and it doesn't really help immobilize the clavicle very much. 
The other thing you want to do is help control the pain. If you've got some pain medicine, uh, it's probably worth taking because these can be very uncomfortable, especially at night when you're sleeping or rolling around. Uh, so you want something with a little bit of a kick, like some hydrocodone. If you don't have access to that, then I would grab some Tylenol, ibuprofen, or aspirin and, and uh, take this to try and alleviate the pain. And again, in my first aid kit, I've got uh, Tylenol and ibuprofen uh, so that we can uh, put a sling on this using a, a triangular bandage, safety pin it up, get them some pain medicine right away to, to help. Now most of these will heal without any intervention whatsoever. You don't have to do anything crazy, you just immobilize the arm for about six to eight weeks um, and it will typically heal within that time. Now it may heal with a big bump um, and you can still feel kind of an abnormal contour of the broken clavicle compared to the normal clavicle and uh, that may exist for years and years or life even. Uh, but as long as the bone heals solidly, that's kind of what we worry about. And uh, that's it for clavicle fractures, the most commonly fractured bone in the body. So uh, it's good to have a triangular bandage, it's good to have some pain medicine, and it's good to have a first aid kit with you. Thanks.